Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and I wanted to make this video because I wanted to talk about something that I hear quite a bit. Whether it's personal readings or comments, uh, and it always makes me smile when I hear this because I know how energy works, at least the way I perceive how it works and I wanna offer that. So with any one of my readings, whether it's a video reading, a personal reading, or maybe you know even any reading that you get, any type of reading that you get, it's important to remember that just because it doesn't make sense in the moment doesn't mean that you can dismiss it, <laughs> okay? Now, let's talk about that a little bit more. So the comment I get often is, for example, I might hear from a client months after a reading and they say, you know what, when I first got this reading, it didn't make sense to me. Or people actually say this, I thought you were crazy the first time I heard this reading. And I've also heard, you know, I, I wasn't taking this seriously. I didn't feel like it resonated. When people say resonated, they mean, do I feel validated by it, typically? And if it doesn't feel ego satisfying, they don't think it resonates. And then, months later, <laughs> something starts to unfold, and there it was. I think with a lot of readings, especially astrological readings, you have to kind of look back on something. Like, it can help you understand what kind of energy you're going to be contending with, but you always have free will. Anybody, whether it's a psychic reading, a tarot reading, a astrological reading, an angel reading, um, what have you, it's always with the idea that you are in charge, you are co-creating with the universe. Yes, you have a soul's contract with high points on it. This is just the way I've always explained it. You have these high points, you have these goals that you're trying to accomplish within this incarnation. But how you get there is determined when you get here, <laughs> right? So that's a wild card. That's that free will choice, okay? So when you get a reading, like I always say in my personal readings, and if you want a personal reading, it's at my website, angelsouls444.com. But I say in the beginning of every reading, whether you have come back to me 20 times or whether it's your first time with me, please have a pen and paper handy. And I also tend to remind people these are not psychic readings because I go into a different kind of frequency, um, you know, just for clarity's sake, because I don't want, I want people to get the most out of the reading. I don't want them coming in expecting one thing and then getting another and then they're confused, right? <laughs> so I always say that, but I always say because there could be some things that come up that may not be ego satisfying. It may not register with you right away, especially when we work with angels. If you open the door and you say, tell me what I need to know, they're going to take that opportunity because they cannot help you unless you invite them in. So the moment you do, they're going to give you everything that you're ready to hear. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. So they're going to give you everything that you're ready to hear. And yet the ego might go, nope, no, it's not. <laughs> no, that's not me. Right. And doing that whole thing. And then you end up dismissing it. And then sure enough, as things develop, as you make your choices, as things unfold, there it is. There's what you were told months ago to get ready for, okay? Now, I have even had clients who know one another who thought that I was reading for the opposite person that I got them mixed up. That was fascinating to me when they shared that with me. I was like, no, I didn't mix you up, but interesting, <laughs> right? Interesting that by going into their deeper energies, I gave them their separate readings and they felt that the readings, like I said, were reversed and meant for the other. So they have actually manifested a friendship where they are true reflectors of one another and attracted to what they see on the surface, which matches up with who they are on a deep level and vice versa, right? Very, very fascinating things with these readings. I've also had things talking about, are you ready to hear it? Um, I've had, I get a lot of fertility questions. So we talk about, you know, what the energy blocks could be around that. Uh, we also talk about the little soul that's about to come in, having a, its own soul's contract and kind of what's involved around that. But I had, I've had several clients actually, where they come and they say, oh, <laughs> don't know where all those baby cards are coming from because I can't get pregnant can't get pregnant and I you know this is what you have to learn to do as a reader to stand by the message trust your intuition that's your job you're built for this right 
or you wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so when it comes up and that bothers clients, I'm sure it would bother me too. But you know, when someone says, no, I stand by this message. Now we're all human. Can we make mistakes? Sure. But when you, when you know what you're tuning into and you feel, no, there's a baby energy here. I don't know how it's going to look necessarily, but I need to let you know there is a baby energy here, right? <laughs> so people who even thought that they couldn't have babies ended up sending me babies, uh, their baby's picture six months later, you know, because they were already pregnant and like, oh, I didn't even know I was pregnant and here it is. This is that kind of thing where when we're listening to a reading, the ego can come in there and say, impossible. It couldn't possibly be that. When really it is on your soul's contract and it is something that is meant to come up, okay, at that time. If someone says, I want to know when I'm going to get married. There are several different types of readings out there. As long as you have a good practitioner who's in their integrity, it's all good. I have, you know, you know, dear friends who are psychics and um, I believe in what they do because they're purely using their intuition. I love astrologers. I really do. I love tarot readers. I love tarot readers because it does kind of get um, right into a situation. So it can be valuable, again, if you have somebody who is reading from a place of integrity. I just always warn against the... Uh, the, one, the charlatans, the ones that are trying to take advantage of vulnerable people. But sometimes when you come and you ask for something in a reading, maybe it's not time for you to hear that, <laughs> right? Maybe if you knew what the answer was, you would freak out. I've had that happen. Um, or, you know, you would, if you just, in general, if you don't hear what you want to hear, you're going to have a very strong reaction that can set off another chain reaction for your future. Does that make sense? So if you're right here, let's, okay, let's break it down with an example. So if you come to me and you say, when am I going to get married? And maybe I tune in and there's nothing. That doesn't mean you're never going to get married. It just means you can't be told this yet because if you were to be told it's four years from now, you're going to freak out. If I tell you you're going to potentially, because you have free will, so everything could change but you could potentially meet that person tomorrow, what are you going to do? You're going to change your frequency, but your frequency needs to stay the same. But if you either get super excited or maybe you panic and go, I need to go shopping. I need to have the right outfit because I want to create this whole beautiful story for Instagram for the day I met the love of my life. You're going to start going off the rails and you're going to affect the outcome. That is why. The angels are extremely careful <laughs> with what they give us. Another thing that could happen is that I could tune in and someone, they could be asking, but there could be this trepidation about how, how the information comes to them. Or there could be this trepidation about, okay, I want to know, but I don't want to know. So there's this push pull. And sometimes, a lot of times actually, that will appear to me as a brick wall or as a boulder. Something's in the way. I am not a reader. I go by the angels, you know, universal laws. I go by those two. So uh, I do not interfere with another person's free will. So if I dive into someone's energy and there is a wall there, I will mention that there is a wall. I will not break down that wall. It's not my duty. <laughs> it would be me interfering. That person might not be ready for that. And I don't even know if I could, you know, like whatever. Um, or if I, sometimes I'll see a curtain too. So that's more of a soft barrier. Um, and with the soft barriers, some readers who don't follow universal laws, again, you guys know I always warn against this. They'll just go up and rip the curtain back. And that could be extremely detrimental to the client. That's like someone, you know, throwing the shower curtain back, right? You're like, oh, what? Not right now. I'll get back to you. <laughs> this is not the time. So we don't, you know, or at least I don't do that, right? So it's very important for us to be careful. And, you know, if you're somebody who's receiving the reading, I know you're exchanging money for a message. And maybe hearing, hey, I, I see a wall going up or I see a boulder, I see that curtain there. So what I would do uh, as a practitioner is I would lay whatever is safe for you to hear, OK? 
Okay. I would lay that down and I'm being guided. So I'll lay that down for you. And then you can figure out what's behind that curtain. We give you some exercises on how to finally look at that. More often than not, people know exactly what's behind that wall. They know exactly what's behind that curtain. They're just not ready to look at it. Again, we need to be very careful with clients. And yet, <laughs> it may not be very ego satisfying because there can be this tendency to put a lot of, uh, like somebody tell me what I need to do. There could be a lot of that put upon a reader. And again, if the reader is working with any sort of integrity, one of the first things that they should tell you is that you have free will. Everything is changeable. If you like what you hear, keep your energy the same. If you don't like what you hear, you can change it. Also be aware that if you like what you hear, don't go out and start making all kinds of impulsive decisions that knock you off course. Okay. So this is really, when you get a reading and you feel like the stuff doesn't pertain to you, <laughs> again, I always tell my clients, write it down, let it go, let it play out. And you'll find that just because it's not hitting the ego doesn't mean that it's not something that you're soul is trying to bring up to the surface for you to be aware of. And again, timing plays into everything. I've heard clients say to me, uh, and don't tell me about divine timing. Tell me when it's going to, don't give me all that. Right. And that already is coming in with an ego defense and that's showing impatience and it's showing a lack of want to work with the universe. And then we have to start working around that. So don't waste your reading time trying to work against, well, not work against, but trying to kind of unfurl the, uh, the need to have it right now, because that's immediately where they're going to go. Because that's the thing that needs to be triaged, right? Because if you're in that energy, you're going to be causing a lot of knots in your timeline. So they'll come in and remedy that first. And sometimes we don't even get to what you asked. So don't come at it with impatience, right? <laughs> Just work on that first. And I would even recommend that if you're getting a reading with any kind of reader to shield your energy, but be open to receiving. Okay. So you can do both. You can be open to receiving, even do a cleansing, clear that ego energy. You know, the ego doesn't have to be bad, but <laughs> like it does get in the way sometimes. So do a clearing, get into alignment, shield yourself. Have an open heart, remember, because you're open, but you're shielded. And then when you're listening to your reading, take notes, write things down, listen to it a few times, okay? And then let things play out. If you especially have a lot of like defensive energy that comes up around something, write that down. Because if you let that play out, that could lead to one of your biggest breakthroughs and it completely unlocks your life. All right. So if you have any more questions, leave them down below. If I get a lot of the same questions, then I will address it in a video. So thank you guys so much. Please make sure that you are subscribed, liking and sharing this video helps out a ton. So I thank you for listening. Take care.